The circular spawner and placement tools uh, allow you to create areas around an item either for spawning purposes or to cluster AI. So instead of having multiple objects uh, or enemies try and cluster in one space, they can find a free space um, within the area that you define. Let's take a look at exactly how these work. So you can see we have four different rings here, uh, each with different points in which it can check to see whether or not there is a free space. Now, the radius here uh, determines how big the item is, or really displays on your area, because it only checks the center point, and it checks it according to the layer mask that is provided in placement mask. Now, you can have as many rings or as few rings as you want. And the first thing we define here is the units from center. So that's how far it is offset from the center of your object. Secondly is the step degrees. And that's how many degrees out of 360 there are between each point. So if we lower these points, we can see that we have more possible locations. If we raise it, we'll see that we have less. Okay, so let's go ahead and repeat this back. And we can see whether or not we draw the gizmos as well. And this is also, just as a note, you cannot edit this at runtime. And the reason for that is, um, well, you can edit the, uh, the locations like this, but it won't be reflected. And the reason for that is because these locations are created at runtime and stored once to lower the amount of overhead in calculating these positions. So once we have these positions, uh, we can check them to see if they're free for the API or we can reserve them. We can also add this additional spawner. And what it does is you can animate the spawn or not. And you can define a Y curve, which is how it animates vertically. And you can also create a spawn table. Now what this does is it uses a weighted table. Each of these have a weight of one, which means they're all equally as likely to happen. Or I can make this two, which results in basically four entries, making this one um, likely to happen half of this, the time, 25% of the time, and also 25% of the time. It can listen to uh, broadcast events, which we're doing right here. We're having a button, uh, and we'll go ahead and look at that on the canvas. So this button uh, uses the GTK broadcaster system, which we covered in a different video, to send a public broadcast with that message. And we can see here that it is listening for that message on the public channel. So when it receives it, it's going to go ahead and spawn. Now let's have a look at what that looks like when it spawns. So we can see it's animating out. And I can turn off the animation and it'll just go straight there. And it is never filling up space that is already filled. So if I hit this, you can see these debug messages saying that we're out of available spots. So we haven't been able to honor the request. If I destroy the objects and clear out, we'll see it can happen again now. If I turn animation back on, clear out the objects, and let's sort of adjust how this curve works. There we go. And now we can see that that animates out a little differently. I can also change the duration of it. I can make it take three seconds to animate out. And there you go. This is also useful for something like a um, treasure chest that uh, spawns loot. And it is also uh, useful for working with the object pull system, which we look at in another video. I hope this is helpful to you, and until next time, goodbye.